For the past several years, I have been playing fantasy football with my extended family. Our fantasy football league usually consists of my four super competitive football fanatic brothers, my not so competitive easygoing sister, my husband who is super competitive but less of a football fanatic, my dad who usually forgets that he's playing and is an easy win, and several of my sister and brother-in-laws who want to join in the fun. I admittedly am not much of a football enthusiast. I love watching my alma mater, BYU, play, but beyond that, I really only like football for the social aspects, hanging out with friends, and making fun football-themed party food. For any of you who haven't gotten into the fantasy football craze, here's a brief description of what it entails. At the beginning of the season, your league holds a draft. Each person takes a turn selecting NFL players to be on their fantasy team. During the NFL season, the real teams face each other and so do the fantasy teams in your league. The players' real-time stats during the real games are converted into fantasy points for each player. The fantasy team that scores the most points wins the game for the week, and obviously the goal is to win as many games as possible and become the fantasy football champion for your league. Since I admittedly don't know that much about football players, I rely on the data that ESPN provides in order to control my team each week, cutting players, adding players, benching players, etc. Each week, ESPN gives a projected point total for the week, along with other stats like point rank, total points, average, and last game points. Every week, I dutifully look at each of my players' projected score for the week to determine what my lineup should be. Using this method, however, has not won me any fantasy football trophies. So this time, I decided to collect some data. On four different weeks, I set up my team on Thursday night and recorded the projected points for each player. Then, after the week was over, I recorded the actual points earned by my players. My goal was to see if there was a relationship between a player's projected points and the actual points that they earned. I started by looking at a scatter plot of the projected points and the actual points. On a scatter plot, we're looking for three things form, direction, and strength. The form on this scatter plot is, well, pretty blobbish. If I had to draw a line through these points, I would say it would be positive, but the linear relationship seems to be pretty weak. Next, I looked at correlation. The correlation between projected score and actual score was R equal to 0.249. Remember when we're looking at R, the closer to positive one or negative one, the stronger the relationship, the closer to zero, the weaker the relationship. An R of 0.249 indicates a pretty weak relationship as far as correlations go. Despite the lame numbers, I went ahead and looked at the regression model for predicting actual score using the projected score. The model was actual score equal to 3.333 plus 0.4908 times projected score. The slope in this model tells us that for every one point projected by ESPN, we would expect the actual score to go up by 0.49. The R squared for this model is 6.2%. This means that only 6.2% of the variation in actual score can be explained by projected score. In other words, projected scores are essentially worthless for predicting a player's actual score. So there you have it. Maybe next year I will choose my players for the week by picking the ones that have the cutest uniform or the coolest sounding name, because it will probably yield the same results as using the data that ESPN provides.